Hello everyone, my name is Mark Valdez and today I'm speaking on sets, props, and filming locations for Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul with an emphasis on Season 4 of Better Call Saul. There are many stories and symbols embedded in the backgrounds of both these television series. One such symbol is that of a ceiling with parallel beams, an allusion to prison bars. Here are two examples at uh, the parking area for Neff Copiers and under the I-40 bridge uh, over the Rio Grande River where Jimmy does community service. These parallel beams can be uh, construction beams, they can be rafters, they can be fluorescent lights, or anything that makes a parallel pattern. The use of such ceilings had been haphazard at best in Breaking Bad until November 2009 when AMC aired a remake of the Prisoner television series. That Prisoner remake used uh, uh, several elements from Breaking Bad but also had their own elements including parallel beams in the ceiling of number six's residence. The uh, this use apparently electrified the creative team at Breaking Bad and from that point forward you see a lot more uh, ceilings with parallel beams in the television series and indeed it's become a major motif of Better Call Saul. And you can see them everywhere in Better Call Saul. You don't need a lot of parallel beams to make a parallel pattern. Indeed, all you really need is one bank of fluorescent lights running down a hallway. And if you're at the Bernalillo County Annex where courthouse scenes are filmed, the polished marble walls on both sides will propagate the pattern out to infinity. This pattern calls to mind the Stargate used in 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Peter Gould is a big 2001 fan, a, bit, a big fan of Stanley Kubrick, and this may be their way of honoring Kubrick's legacy. Jimmy McGill has no socially acceptable means of achieving his personal goals. This leads to a condition known as anomy, a mismatch between personal and social standards and a recognized source of deviant behavior. Despite Jimmy having developed the RICO case against Sandpiper Crossing, his brother Chuck blocks his advancement at HHM. The resultant deviant behavior by Jimmy, as expressed at the bingo hall, include telling the Chicago sunroof story and corrupting the game of bingo in order to pressure Irene Landry to settle. The bowl of balls is their symbol for the condition of anomy, and it may be a reference to Sisyphus, the Greek fellow who rolled the ball up the mountain, because like uh, Jimmy McGill, uh, Sisyphus was a trickster and had a brother who hated him. Shapes are very important in both television series. Um, for example, the bowl of balls in the bingo hall scene is the bingo ball reservoir, the shape of which closely resembles that of the prisoner's penny farthing, this, the symbol of the original 1967 television series. The bowl of balls returns in season two of Better Call Saul in the corporate apartment that Davis and Maine make available to Jimmy. The um, Jimmy is blocked in his advancement at Davis and Maine because he disrespects the norms that make up life in a large law firm. When he airs a television ad without permission uh, and is rebuked by Clifford Maine, he discovers he can no longer even sleep in the corporate apartment and has to retreat to his nail salon office in order to find sleep. The Bowl of Balls returns in season four of Better Call Saul at CC Mobile, where Jimmy gets a, a job for the interim year when he is on PPD 
uh, pre-prosecution diversion. The resultant deviant behavior as expressed at CC Mobile includes selling telephones to an unsavory clientele. And Jimmy bounces the ball off the windows much as Steve McQueen does in the 1963 film, The Great Escape. Over both television series, the ghost of Chicago looms. The story of Chicago is told in the background through the use of modern windows, in particular glass block windows and Luxfer prismatic tile windows, both of which were created in Chicago, and to some extent plate glass windows. For example, when Brock is in the hospital recovering from Lily of the Valley, we see glass block windows. The context here is product tampering, and the reference is to the 1982 Chicago Tylenol poisoning murders. When Schuyler is cooking the books at Beneke Fabricators, we see glass block windows. The reference here is to the collapse of Chicago-based accounting firm Arthur Anderson in the year 2001 due to the Enron scandal. Glass block windows are very versatile, especially when combined with other symbols. For example, in the scene where Walt is wheeled into the industrial laundry in a laundry cart, we see a glass block window in the background. The showrunners here are honoring the legacy of El Chapo Guzman, head of the Sinaloa cartel and the most powerful drug lord who has ever lived. In 2001, El Chapo escaped from Puente Grande prison in Mexico, uh, allegedly in a laundry cart. And the Chicago reference comes because uh, the Sinaloa cartel provides Chicago with almost all of its illicit drugs. Luxfer prismatic tile windows are seen whenever fraud or deceit is at issue. We see them, for example, when the skateboarders um, accidentally ambush Abuelita. Uh, the name Luxfer uh, is closely related to the name Lucifer. They both derive from the Latin uh, term for light bearer. And indeed, uh, these windows can be seen in some sense as Satan's windows. And they're Satan's windows because they're, they're from Chicago. Plate glass windows, uh, on the other hand, were invented in Europe, but one of the foremost exponents for their use, uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, was based in the city of Chicago. Stagger symbols are used as warning signs throughout uh, both television series. On the left here, we have a, a, st a stagger symbol. And we see them whenever there's uh, potential for trouble. For example, we see the staggered wall surrounding the pool at the Dulce Vega resort where um, uh, Werner awaits his wife. High in the lobby at Mesa Verde, we see a staggered window and wall. Season three, scenes in Better Call Saul were filmed in this office here on the right, but we are led to understand that on the opposite side of this window here, we can find the room with architectural models. The stagger reminds us that uh, Mesa Verde's rapid expansion in the years before the Great uh, Recession uh, is, uh, is a dangerous course of conduct. When Jimmy pitches the Hummel theft to Mike and Mike refuses, Jimmy leaves in a huff and returns to his car and places a, a telephone call to the veterinarian. As he returns to his car, we see several symbols. For example, uh, a bell-shaped street lamp. Bells are, are used as danger signs. Uh, we also see a reference to firearms. We see the stagger in the corner of the mural, uh, of the Loyola's uh, mural behind the restaurant. And the scene is filmed through uh, a fence whose bars refer to prison bars. 
when stagger symbols are brought into archways, we get what are known as Pueblo Deco arches. Pueblo Deco arches are the uh, most dire symbol used in either television series because they foreshadow tragedy, they foreshadow deaths. We see Pueblo Deco arches, for example, everywhere at Jesse and Jane's duplex, uh, where their romance is doomed. We also see Pueblo Deco arches at the back deck at Hank and Marie's when Hank is saddling up to start chasing Heisenberg. In season four, we see the Pueblo Deco arch as simple as it is on the north face of the warehouse where the German workers are housed. This particular arch, this overhang, foreshadows Werner's demise in, uh, later in the television series. In the episode Cushada, we see in two consecutive scenes Pueblo Deco arches. Uh, for example, Jimmy's potential new law office, which has overhangs on two sides, an interesting garrison style um, construction with a drive up window, which indicates that it may have once been a bank. And we also see a Pueblo Deco arch for the first time at the back doorway into the kitchen at El Michoacano restaurant where Nacho meets Lalo for the first time. Uh, it's very unusual to have two symbols like this in succession. In fact, it may be unprecedented in either television series. And uh, it can indicate to me only uh, a great tragedy is about to occur. It, it probably wasn't Werner's death at the end of season four, but a tragedy yet to come, probably sometime early in season five. On the one hand, we have Kim and Jimmy. On the other hand, we have Lalo and Nacho. My thought is all four of these uh, people will come to um, come and meet and a great tragedy will result. Cartesian grids indicate the power of rationality. And whenever a, a Cartesian grid is used as a prop or as a costume piece, there's always questions hanging in the air. We see, for example, the um, uh, Hector's communication grid and also his color grid. Uh, we also see Lydia's purse and this very unusual scheduling grid that Gus uses to schedule workers at his restaurant. We have the bingo card and um, anytime you can clearly see the crossword puzzle that Mike is working on, there's always a question hanging in the air. This applies too to costume pieces. Uh, we have uh, Kim's very unusual grid-like blouse when she is interviewing with Kevin and Paige regarding uh, a potential job as outside counsel for Mesa Verde. And even when uh, Jesse, Skinny Pete, and Combo are partying with Walt's money, um, when this barmaid appears with, with her uh, Cartesian grid uh, top, uh, there's a question about whether there's any more uh, Dom Perignon. Cartesian grids also appear in building facades. Uh, in the episode Vita saying, uh, Jimmy races up to the top of the parking structure adjacent to the Sims building in downtown Albuquerque and rages at Kim about the injustice of a year of PPD. As Jimmy tries to reason through the reasons for for this development. In the background, we see the Cartesian grid facade of the former public service company of New Mexico building. But at the end of the scene, we are faced with the this unusual facade uh, of offset windows in the Dennis Chavez Federal Building. I'm a little unclear what offset windows indicate. Uh, offset blocks may be uh, incorporation of stagger symbols. They may in, in indicate uh, 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 a warning sign. 
But what I think is unusual too is that the um, outline of the building as seen on television is very nearly square within about 3% tolerance of being completely square. Tin ceilings indicate imminent punishment. There's a tin ceiling at Louis Bar, but we don't always see the ceiling in Louis Bar scenes. Nevertheless, we do when Werner and Mike share a Hefeweizen with this fellow. And indeed, it's the very next scene where Kai is thrown out of the strip club, his punishment. Here is a picture of the Crystal Palace of London. It was built in 1851 for the Great Exhibition. It was moved in 1854 and it burned down in 1936. The Crystal Palace of London was very influential in the development of modern architecture, particularly in regards to the streamlined modern style. It influenced the design of shopping malls in 19th and 20th century Europe and, and America. It was the first large building in England to use plate glass, and it was built in a modular way uh, and was built very quickly. Uh, nevertheless, it had a tendency towards tawdriness over time. Uh, the roof leaked quite a bit, which is a big problem in England, and uh, uh, and it was starved for maintenance, so it, it had a tendency to run down over the years. In Breaking Bad, the Crystal Palace is the nickname given to the Crossroads Motel, also a very tawdry place. It seems to me that it would not have been given that nickname unless there was a direct physical connection to the original Crystal Palace of London. But what is that connection? If you take a, a, a plan view of the Crossroads Motel, a view from above, and look at the dimensions of the principal north wing of the motel, the aspect ratio, the ratio of the length to the width, equals 4.9, which is identical to the uh, aspect ratio of windows used in the original Crystal Palace of London. And I believe that is the connection. In addition, the tall sign at the Crossroads Motel has a, an aspect ratio length to width of nine to four, which is identical to that of the monolith used in 2001, A Space Odyssey, whose dimensions uh, were nine to four to one, uh, one referring to the depth, the squares of the first three prime numbers. There's also a second reference to the Crystal Palace of London uh, in, the, uh, in the railings used in the lobby at HHM. In particular, the, this crossbar structure used to support the railings. This particular crossbar structure was first used as a major innovation in the Crystal Palace. And these crossbar structures are exactly as used in the Crystal Palace. So we have at least two significant connections to the original Crystal Palace. And in a sense, the Crossroads Motel of Albuquerque is, is simply a shard of its long gone original parent in London. Mandalas are very important in both television series. In general, a mandala is a representation of a closed universe, of, a, of an entire cosmos, an entire way of thinking. And the many numerous artistic representations are available of mandalas, but they all share one characteristic in common, that of a circle within a square. The square often has four T-shaped entrances. This symbol of a circle within a square is also shared by a pizza within its box. And so we should understand 
pizzas as representing mandalas. And being in the box is important for the pizza. For example, when uh, in season three of Breaking Bad, Skyler refuses Walt entrance to the family home. Walt in his rage throws the pizza on the roof, but the pizza separates from its box. This is no good. It shows that Walt's uh, mandala, his, his cosmos is in disarray. Similarly, in season four A Better Call Saul, Mr. Neff is sleeping in his office because he has had an argument with his wife. He orders a pizza, but he orders the pizza sliced. This is no good either. The pizza has to remain intact, unsliced, and within its box to represent a harmonious mandala, a harmonious universe. Mandalas explain uh, some interesting location choices. For example, in the episode Cornered, uh, uh, Schuyler visits the Four Corners Monument, which is itself shaped like a mandala. And in season four of Better Call Saul, in the episode Talk, we see two mandalas representing the, the, the closed universe of the criminal world. For example, when Jimmy is debriefing Ira at Ace Rebar, we have a close look at the um, at the doorway there, which is a, a circle within a square. And when Gus is debriefing Nacho after the uh, attack on the Espinosa brothers, we see the fan, which is once again a circle within a square. I particularly like this image of Jimmy's nail salon office from the episode Uno. The view from above where we see Jimmy with outstretched arms on his bed, and in the foreground we see a metal lattice. The composition of this work resembles that of a 1954 painting by uh, Salvador Dali, uh, Corpus Hypercubus, of, of, of Jesus on a hypercube cross. And uh, Salvador Dali believed that the worlds of science and religion are not at odds with each other, but are actually in harmony. And Vince Gilligan believes something quite similar to that. The hypercube cross returns in season three of Better Call Saul in the episode Chicanery, when Chuck is testifying as to the effects of electromagnetic radiation on his health. In the mural in the background, we see two crosses we see a Spanish mission cross together with the hypercube cross surrounded by symbols of warfare. And indeed, um, the worlds of uh, tradition and modernity have been at war. At this particular point in the testimony, Chuck says, uh, electricity is everywhere in the modern world. And indeed, it's electricity that distinguishes the modern world from that of modernity. We understand that the nickname Heisenberg comes to Breaking Bad from the world of physics, from Werner Heisenberg, author of The Uncertainty Principle. But I don't think we understand fully that the name Heisenberg comes to Breaking Bad through the writings of Salvador Dali in his Antimatter Manifesto where he states that my father today is Dr. Heisenberg. There are many film references in these television series. I wanted to focus on two obscure ones. In the episode Quite a Ride, wannabe super lab excavators are compelled to wear a hood over their head as they await by a, a, a remote um, roadside. I believe that this, um, this episode re refers to the uh, 2008 mumblecore film called Baghead. Baghead is about wannabe filmmakers who retire to a cabin in the woods in order to write a script. And as they're doing so, they are harassed by a fellow wearing a, a bag over his head. 
Uh, mumblecore film is a, is a new uh, genre. It's been around since the mid-90s with the Blair Witch Project. Mumblecore films are characterized by three things. Uh, mum, uh, microscopic budgets, uh, use of natural settings, and uh, use of handheld video. In general, Better Call Saul avoids handheld video, but they do use it, they do use it in this scene in a natural setting, and they seem to be making an analogy. Wannabe super lab excavators are like wannabe filmmakers. I particularly like the Kleinfeld signs that are in uh, in seasons two and four of Better Call Saul. Uh, Kleinfeld is an Albuquerque uh, commercial brokerage. Uh, it's run by a fellow named David Kleinfeld. And for that reason, you can find Kleinfeld signs all over the city of Albuquerque. In fact, um, uh, th the signs are so common that uh, to an Albuquerque resident, uh, it, it virtually disappears in, in, for example, in the scene here on the left. Uh, uh, people see this Kleinfeld sign all the time. But as people in the UK pointed out to me, uh, David Kleinfeld is the sleazy lawyer played by Sean Penn in the 1993 film Carlito's Way. And I think it's very striking that uh, uh, Vince Gilligan and company can drop an underworld reference right into the middle of a scene. And if you're from Albuquerque, it's very hard to see. It's virtually invisible. Sometimes symbols are altered or changed over the course of the series. In the episode Quite a Ride, we see a, a, a backlit bell-shaped street light at the wash tub laundry, and this light is off as first seen. Nevertheless, in the next episode, Pinata, we see the same light again, but this time the light is on, and this time the, uh, the shape of the symbol, the shape of the bell has been altered by the addition of a cylindrical shield. When you change the shape of a symbol, you can change its emphasis and meaning. A cylindrical shield acts as something of a megaphone. Bells represent danger. So uh, uh, a megaphone on a, on a, on a bell uh, emphasizes the danger. Uh, not only is Jimmy in danger in this scene, but he's in extreme danger. And indeed, um, also in the episode uh, Quite a Ride, we, we see Jimmy walking directly beneath one of these bell-shaped lamps with a cylindrical shield attached to it. In the episode Nailed, uh, we see a view out the window at Loyola's restaurant while Mike is preparing for a meeting with Nacho. Mike has this meeting pretty much under control. There's no real danger. There are um, a, a six or seven bell-shaped lamps in the background, but the mouths of, of almost all the bells are obscured by the Venetian blinds in the foreground. An obscured mouth to a bell uh, silences it. In, in, and, and so, indeed, there's no real danger uh, in regards to, to this upcoming meeting. In contrast, in the episode uh, some, Something Beautiful, uh, Jimmy pitches the Hummel theft to Mike in the background, we also see six or seven bell-shaped lamps, but the mouths of almost all of them are exposed, indicating that this proposed theft is the dangerous course of conduct. Certain symbols, when obscured, uh, lose their potency. Uh, in the episode, uh, Live Free or Die from Breaking Bad, in Jesse's living room, the bottom few steps of his stairway represent a stagger symbol, 
but there's no particular need for a warning sign at this point. So they endeavor to block the view of the symbol with the use of Jesse's arm. In the episode Sabrosito, Mike enters Chuck's house under false pretenses to take pictures of Chuck's living condition. Uh, Mike chases Chuck up the stairway. The uh, profile of the stairway forms a stagger symbol, but there's no particular need for a warning sign at this point, so they obscure the symbol with a shirt hanging from the railing. There are Chinese symbols used in uh, in these television series. In the copy shop sequence in the episode Nailed, on the wall we have a poster advertising color copies for 44 cents each. In the scene itself we have a spirited argumentation between Lance the copy shop manager and Chuck. Uh, despite the animation of the scene, Lance keeps his head almost perfectly fixed, so we see only one of the fours of, in the background. Uh, the number four in Chinese culture represents death, and indeed Chuck is flirting with death just by entering the shop. There's also a second four in the scene. The camera zooms in through the four in the front window, in the neon sign, open 24 hours. And this is not the first time Chinese symbols have been used. In Breaking Bad, uh, the Phalaenopsis orchid was Schuyler's flower. Phalaenopsis orchids are known as moth orchids. In Chinese culture, moths are this, uh, represent the spirits of ancestors who have died. So this is essentially a death symbol. We see the Phalaenopsis orchid again when uh, Kim is feeling trapped at HHM together with a bell-shaped desk lamp and bells of course represent danger too. So we have a danger and a death symbol together. So uh, Kim had better get out of HHM. So in conclusion, uh, see in season four, A Better Call Saul, we don't see any major changes in the uses of symbols as compared to previous seasons of both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And there are indications of a major tragedy coming up uh, probably early in season five. And that is my presentation. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I do write about these uh, matters uh, in these two books available at Amazon.com. And thank you very much for your time and attention.